Hello there. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. The recent episode of Mandalorian has dropped tons of new information to process, so let's jump right in. This video is brought to you by yours truly and my best friend, Papa G. Ohm Groovy. We have this discussion broken into segments. If you want to avoid any spoilers, please go to start off to the first impressions of Ahsoka in the last episode. A lot of people have said that her, her head tails are much shorter than what they were on the animated show, but that seems to only have uh, like a practical effect on the character at large. I mean, it, it, it wouldn't make sense to be able to do stunts with these huge head tails coming down your shoulders, you know? She would chop off her hair at some point with those sabers flying around. Yeah, for real. For real. I mean, but I loved her look. I think she looks super cool. Oh, yeah. Her lightsabers look so accurate compared to what the last time we saw her in Rebels. Um, she looked more like a samurai in this episode, and it was so badass. Almost like, mm -hmm. almost like a Kill Bill vibe. Uh, Rosario Dawson's portrayal of the character, she's still great. I mean, like, when, immediately when you see her, you know, like, it's Ahsoka Tano as opposed to, oh, that's Rosario Dawson playing Orange Face. Yeah, you know? yeah, so. it definitely did. It definitely did. She, she did a great job as looking like Ahsoka. I didn't seem to have a problem with the, uh, the length of her tails because, <laughs> like you said, it's more practical than mm -hmm. anything else. And it still looked very realistic. Yeah. I, mean, I understand it was like just a headpiece yeah. over her head, but it still looked pretty nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, honestly, the head tails were like the last thing I was even considering to be like, is this is this actually going to be a Sogatana in live action? I mean, it's more about the, the emotions that the actor can portray from uh, like a continuation of the character from the animated universe that they had going on. Mm -hmm. And Rosario Dawson really pulled it off. You really felt like that was a Sogatana. Right. So I'm looking forward to seeing what the rest of Ahsoka Tano's story is in live action. So that is going to tie into my next question. What do you think Ahsoka's use in the storyline of Mandalorian is going to be? Besides what she's done for us already, she's given backstory to Baby Yoda, and she has name-dropped a certain someone that we are going to talk about later in the video. But besides that, do you think we're going to actually see her later in the season? Or was this like a one-time thing and she might be done? I think it is going to be a one-time thing. I think she pretty much has uh, used up her time on this show. I think, given that she did name drop a certain someone, um, I think that will lead into her own series, which will inevitably, or probably be the a live-action Rebels show. So that's that's my take on that. I don't think she's going to return again in this season, but maybe next season. We don't even know how this one's going to end yet, so... That's true. This is very true. We have a lot of things to go for the next three episodes. In ...that Baby Yoda has been given his own name in the show. Mm-hmm. His name is Grogu, and it's just as weird as it sounds. To some people, they love it. Other people are really questioning Disney's life decisions. <laughs> <laughs> I actually really like the name. I think the reveal that Ahsoka had um, unveiled at the time in that episode was really, really cool. It ties into the prequels, and obviously it carries over through the original trilogy. I think it's, I think it's really cool. The prequel era has so much rich lore in that time period, and for them to keep on expanding that is just awesome to me. Now, do you have any guesses about what baby yoda's past is going to be personally i feel like it's going to be a clone but every fiber in my being says that it's going to be yoda and yaddle's kid i don't think he's going to be a clone uh, i think they've kind of confirmed that with uh, the unveil of his past um i think i think there's only one way like what you like for him to actually come about in his being and i think you just said it right there i think it would be like the passion child of yaddle and yoda i mean there's there's ripples of a similar situation that was to what there was with their species with coyote Mund coyote mundi um his species also is pretty much going extinct and the jedi council had um put forward an exception in his case how they don't have, allow attachments and stuff he was allowed to have multiple wives so he could procreate so it's kind of like a similar situation to what could have happened with yoda and yaddle but that ruling may not have come into action yet and that may be one of the reasons why we never see yaddle like reserve some for the foundlings as it should always be 
The foundlings are the future. This is the way. This is the way. This is the way. So, like, even if 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 that theory does come out to like to be real, and he never tried to commune with his son, that's just Yoda being a shitty dad. He went to go get some milk and never came back. Um. So another thing Ahsoka mentioned was that there is going to be another Jedi on Tython. Now, for what we know, how many Jedi are left standing at this point in the in the show? Besides Ahsoka and Luke. And Leia doesn't count. <laughs> yeah, Leia doesn't count. So, for the Jedi that we know are alive, there's obviously Luke Skywalker, like you said, Ezra Bridger from the Rebel series, and there's also Cal Kestis from Jedi Fallen Order. So, I think it's really unlikely that Cal Kestis will come forward. He might only be related into the video game universe. And also, I mean, there is already an actor who is portraying him being Cameron Monaghan. He's like, I want to say in his mid to late 20s. So he wouldn't be able to portray a 40-year-old Cal Kestis. <laughs> um, and I guess Mace Windu is still up in the air. Everyone keeps throwing around his name. And I guess Jedis can survive great heights. So, uh, while you're all sitting there, I know you're all in my corner on this. We know Jedi's can fall from incredible heights and survive. So, apparently, I am not dead. Yes, I have two appendages right now, but we know the long and rich history of Star Wars characters reappearing with new appendages and being stronger and better than they ever were. Mace Windu is awaiting his return. I mean, that would be pretty wild if they could make him have a comeback. And even with the greater implications of that, I mean, they already reintroduced Boba Fett. So. This is going to be a bit of a prediction, but I think that the new Jedi they're going to see is either Luke or Ezra at time. Yeah, I agree. That seems like the most reasonable prediction. Mm hmm. I mean, I was also thinking about ways they could potentially get around of casting a younger Luke Skywalker. If, let's say Luke Skywalker is the headmaster of that Jedi Order, why would, and, and, and let's assume that Ezra Bridger is part of that Order. He, Luke Skywalker could potentially just send Ezra to go and pick up Grogu. Mm -hmm. You know? They could still be connected and not have to cast for a younger Luke Skywalker. As much as I would like them to. The only people listed in the show is the Mandalorian, Cara Dune, Moff Gideon, and Grief Karga. Hmm. It was the only ones listed for the next episode. So we're probably going. So we're we're going to see Moff Gideon. Um, okay. Ahsoka name drops Thrawn. And that implies that he's still alive, because she's looking for him. And that can also mm -hmm. imply that Ezra is still alive, because the last time we saw them was in Rebels, together. Right. So, the next scene that leads to your prediction for Thrawn in the next episode. Uh, I, I really just think that he's going to be the main villain. I, I think I think Moff Gideon, Gideon is answering to him. You know, I think it just implies bigger things. Like It's just bigger than... The show has been, you know, it's just constantly expanding. So, I mean, you can even see that. I mean, from the very beginning of the show, it starts off with the Mandalorian in humble beginnings. And a bounty hunter. Meets up with this kid. And then crazy shit just starts happening. You know, it just keeps on exploding from there. That it kind of turns into that Easter egg hunt. You know? Especially in the beginning of this season. We see Boba Fett. And now, uh, mid-season, we see Ahsoka Tano. So we know that there's a tracker on the Razor Crest right now, and that has not come to fruition yet. So I don't know if actually a Jedi will even show up in the next episode. It might just be something where uh, Moff Gideon is still tracking him, and instead of in the place of a Jedi showing up, he's going to show up. Yeah. yeah. And nothing has come about it yet. There's been like two episodes since that happened. Yeah, they're probably still hot on his trail. Yeah. I mean, I'm surprised he didn't show up last episode and, like, try and capture Ahsoka. Yeah, the fact that Ahsoka has helped out so many Mandalorians, that, like, you'd think she would be helping them 
chase down Moff Gideon because he stole the Darksaber. Mm -hmm. Well, I think it's all connected. I think that um, Imperials are still occupying Mandalore, and there's a lot of connections to assuming that that could happen. I mean, if 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 Moff Gideon has the dark saber, that implies that he has a, at least had like a a, a, a confrontation with Bo Katan to take it from her. Yeah, you know, and, and we even know too that at the end of Clone Wars, obviously this this clones occupying Mandalore at that point, and that eventually turns into the Empire, and then I believe that the Empire was pretty much forcing their occupation on that planet. And then I think a lot of the Mandalorians left. So I think they're trying to get it back. Hmm. Again. <laughs> will Din Djarin be Force-sensitive? Or better yet, will he have the Darksaber at some point in the show? I, I hope not. As epic as it would be to follow this character, like I said before, like from humble beginnings to epic proportions. But I don't think it would be right. I don't think that I don't think a lot of fans would like that. And I honestly, I would be surprised if they did that. The I mean, sensitive bit. Yeah, that and having the dark saber. Because if he has the dark saber, that kind of implies that he's the leader of Mandalore. I mean, that doesn't really mean Moff Gideon is the leader of Mandalore just because he has it. I mean, he he might be. If there's still I mean, Imperial like, occupation on that planet and he has the Darksaber by defeating Bo-Katan, he's technically the leader of Mandalore. You know, the way Disney goes all the time, I don't see it against them to just kill off Bo-Katan and then, like, Mandalore, Mando's just there and she's like, you will lead us. <laughs> I don't guys. think they will do that. I don't think they'll <laughs> kill off Bo-Katan. I mean, I don't now, now with Dave Filoni and John Favreau in charge of this, I don't think they'll kill him. She's too badass and liked of a character by the community that it, for them to kill her off. Same thing with Ahsoka. I don't think she's going to go away anytime soon. I don't think they're going to kill off Ahsoka. But they might not use her because they don't want to ruin her badassery. Yeah, I mean... It's Especially if she's going to have her own show, you know? Like, if she's going to have her own show, I don't think they would kill her off. I mean, she might not come back in this season at all, but I think they're saving her for her own intimate yeah. show. So. Not? What if? Not do you think? But what are? What will be? Grogu's first words. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm gonna keep it simple and have it just be Din. 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 One one syllable. Yeah, I mean, that's Din Jaren's first name, obviously, and it, it it could also imply dinner. He's a very food motivated baby. He oh, you have a good point there. It could be dinner that he's talking about. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a really good point, actually. You got me there. I was going to say something stupid like Mando. <laughs> <laughs> Dinner. <laughs> no, no, his first word is going to be kill. And that's when we know he's going to go to the dark side. Seth. <laughs> <laughs> well, Pop Geom Snooby, thank you very much for your time. I appreciate your answers and your input. Uh, folks, if you want to check out his channel, he's got some great videos of gameplay and funny videos, funny montages. Papa Geom Snooby, I'll leave a link in the description. And uh, thanks again. You guys have a great day. Thank you guys for having me.